All right, guys. Um, as you know, my wife's been sick, so um, I left early on Thursday, and so now I'm going to try some stuff here at home to help you guys uh, continue with the next section in algebra. So right now we are working on factoring, and uh, this is the first video for the flip classroom plan for factoring. We're going to be focused on greatest common factor. Uh, we're going to be working on factoring using the greatest common factor. And uh, as you can see, we have a set of notes that I'll be doing with you here in a second. And then we have a worksheet called A2 Factoring. You're going to do 1 through 19 all, and then 26 through 45. Do only odds or evens, because if for some reason um, you don't do well on the odds, we're going to talk about them, and then you're going to do the evens to make sure that you understood them completely. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the notes. So factoring using the GCF. Today we're going to be able to find the GCF and we're going to factor using the distributive property. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to find a product, which is a review of what we did in the last section following the product rules. And so, you know, we got 8x cubed and then we have 10x squared. Okay. When we distribute a negative, we have negative b to the fifth minus 2b to the fourth plus 5b to the third. <clears throat> so what a GCF is, a GCF is actually this number right here. This, this right here, the negative b to the cubed, is the greatest common factor of the uh, fully expressed form here. And so that's what we're going to talk about with this next slide. GCF means greatest common factor. And this is the biggest number or monomial, which is a combination of numbers and uh, letters that's in common. So um, the first thing we got here is what is the GCF of each pair of numbers? Well, there is a trick that we can use, and I'll have to show it to you guys when we get to school with calculator, but if you uh, know, like in the past, you were probably taught to uh, break down the um, each number into its factor tree, and so 14 obviously breaks down into 2 and 7, 28 breaks down into um, 7 and 4, and then two and two. And so you can tell we have a two and a seven in common and a seven and a two in common. And then seven times two is 14. So the GCF of 14 and 28 is 14. GCF of 55 and 121, well, this breaks down to 11 and five. We stop there. This breaks down into 11 and 11. So we have an 11 on each side the greatest common factor of 55 and 121 is 11. <clears throat> okay. You can find the G GCF using the TI-83. So if you click math, and then you click the right arrow, where it says numbers and you click the number nine or you can scroll down to it you type in one of the numbers and then you click the comma and this is located above the number uh, three I believe I don't have a calculator with me because I'm at home um, and we'll check it I think it's left parenthesis right parenthesis comma I'm pretty sure the or the commas over there next to the parenthesis but it's in there um, you, you then you type in the other number and you close parentheses. So when you're done, your screen should look like this. The GCD of, so if we're gonna do one of the ones from before, 55 comma 121. And when you hit enter, notice I closed parentheses, when you hit enter, you would get 11. So make sure you take your calculator out and you hit math, your right arrow, nine, 
you hit you see GCD with a left front C, put in fifty five comma one twenty one, close front C, and make sure you get eleven to make sure you understand how to do that. Once you understand that, go ahead and find the GCF of the following pairs of numbers. You can go ahead and pause the video at this point to do those, and then when you're done, we'll check. All right, hopefully you guys um, checked out the GCF. For this one, you should have gotten 15. Um, for this one, you should have gotten eight. For this one, you should have gotten 18. Okay. Uh, on your worksheet, questions one through six, deal with how to do that. So of course that's under the all. You can do that now or you can wait until the end to do all of it, your choice. What we use this for is, and we say welcome to the GCF is right. So we're going to find the GCF number and variable in common. So you find the highest exponent in common without going over. So we know 6 and 42, we could go 6 comma 42 and look that up and we know that that's 6. But what we don't know is, what does h cubed and h squared have in common? Well, this is an h and h and an h, and this is an h and an h. So if we look at that closely, we'll notice we have 2 here and 3 here. 1 here, 1 here, 1 here, 1 here, 1 left over. So we know that they have an h squared in common. On this one, we have 35 x plus 7, so if we do 35 and 7, we know that that's 7. Then when we look at the exponents, well this one has an x and this one doesn't. Do they have x's in common? No. So 7 is the GCF for that. Where it gets a little bit more difficult is when we look at um, mixed things that are going on here. So we have 8 and 3. When we do the GCF of 8 and 3, well, that's just 1. So we can't really change that number there. But when we look at x to the 7th and x to the 3rd, they both have an x to the 3rd in there. So the GCF is just x to the 3rd. Final example, 5 and 15, the GCF is 5. Now we're just going to look to, at the x's. x to the 5th x to the third. How many x's do they have in common? Well again, five on this side, three on that side. Yeah, if I was going to take some away from each, I could only take three away from each. So it's five x cubed. But we're not done. Now we also have to address the y's. Y to the first here, y to the fourth there. So we're going to break out just the one y. So the GCF is five x cubed y to the first. There's some more practice here on the worksheet again, uh, numbers 7 through um, 13. And it's again, it's just practicing what's in common. And that's the thing that most students struggle with. Uh, you'll be quick to put W cubed here because you're like, well, both of them have W and I need to go to the highest. It's not the highest. It's what's in common. So again, you're going to go with what's in common. Okay. We can also use the TI-83 to find the GCF of three numbers. So in order to find the GCF of three numbers, we're gonna get the calculator again. We're gonna click math. We're gonna click right arrow. And we're gonna click nine. So let's say we had 55, 66, and 121. Something we know is gonna come up 11 again. We're going to go ahead and put 55 in, and we're going to click the comma. And then we're going to go back and do it again. Math right arrow 9, we're going to put 66 in, click the comma again, put in 121, and then we're going to close parentheses twice. Close parentheses. So that when we're done, we should have GCD of 55 comma 60 of comma parentheses GCD 66 comma 121 and then two parentheses. So you should have GCD 
parenthesis 55 comma parenthesis GCD 66 comma 121 and when you get done that should equal 11 so double check and make sure you understand how to do that Now that you practice that, go ahead and see if you can do the GCF of these three sets. Okay, for number one, you should have gotten 15. For number two, you should have gotten two. And for number three, you should have gotten six. And again, I'll double check these when I get back to school and I've got my calculator to make sure that they're all right. So... When we have three numbers, we can do what we did before. But before we do that, make sure you understand uh, on the worksheet, problems numbered 14 through 19 have to do with finding the GCF of three numbers. Okay. So when we get back to the notes, now that we know how to find the GCF of three numbers and we also know how to find the GCF of a variable, we can do that with more than two terms. So it says, welcome to GCF is right again. You must find the GCF number and variable in common. And remember, it's the highest in common without going over. So you split it up. So let's do the number first here. 642 and 9 is 3. H cubed, H squared, and H. Well, there's a three H's here and two here and one here. Well, the highest in common without going over is just 1. So 3H is my GCF. Thirty-five x squared plus seven x minus twenty-one. Well, first I do the number. That's just seven, and then I have to look at the variables. X squared x. There's none here. So can I use a variable? And the answer is no. I cannot use a variable as part of my GCF. Eight x to the seventh plus three x cubed minus x squared. Well, this is eight, three, and one. Automatically, whenever you see a one, your GCF is one. Here's the hint to what you're going to be pulling out. Find your smallest exponent. It's 2. x squared automatically is my GCF. 40, 16, and 24. I should have 8. You can guys can check that for me. And then x cubed, x cubed, and x. Again, I'm looking for my smallest exponent. That's x y squared, y to the fourth, y cubed, look for my smallest exponent, that's y squared. That is my GCF. Now we're at the point where you guys can start doing odds or evens. 20 through 26 works on finding the GCF of a multi-term polynomial. So go ahead and do that. And again, you only have to do half. The idea is where does this all go, okay? What this leads up to is what we call reverse distribution. So before, you guys would distribute and get 6x cubed plus 15x squared. So to work in reverse, you have to find what is in common, or the GCF. And this is what we call factoring. So when we do the uh, factoring, or when we do the distribution, we're getting rid of parentheses. But when we undo distributing, which is called factoring, we are creating parentheses. So today we're going to learn how to factor using GCF, okay? And so obviously the first thing we want to do is we want to line up the polynomial. We want to make sure we combine any like terms and get it in order and you know make sure that the terms are in the correct order. We want to find out what is in common, and we take this out. And essentially this means we're going to separate the coefficients by dividing them, and we're going to subtract the exponents. Before we get into this one, and I need to move up, sorry. So again, we're going to line up polynomials, we're going to find what's in common, we're going to take it out, and that means we're going to divide coefficients, subtract the exponents and the variables. Before we get into this one, let's take a look at this again. So let's take a look at 6x cubed plus 15x squared. What's in common 
among the 6 and the 15? Well, a 3 and an x squared. And if we look up there at the top, we see that we originally distributed a 3x squared. So we know we found what's in common. This means that we are going to divide both of these numbers by 3x squared. And so we are creating parentheses. So when I do 6 divided by 3, I get 2. x cubed divided by x squared, I get x to the first, which is a follow-up of what we just did in the last unit. 15 divided by 3 is 5. x squared divided by x squared is x to the 0. We know those cancel out. That equals 1. So when I fully factor 6x cubed plus 15x squared, I get 3x squared times 2x plus 5. So again, all last unit we spent doing it. This whole unit we're going to spend undoing it. And did I undo it correctly? I did. Go ahead and try this one. And when you pause it, uh, after you pause it, come back and look and see if you did it correctly. So when I, hopefully you don't pause the video now, I divided both sides by 5x because that was my GCF. So when I got 5x and then parentheses, I have 3 plus 5x. Okay. Seven more here. I want you to go ahead and pause the video, attempt all seven of them, find the GCF factor. After you've tried all seven, unpause the video and watch me complete the seven problems. There's not going to be a lot of talking. I'm just going to work them. So I want you guys to work them, watch me work them, and then you'll know the steps. GCF is 2x parentheses plus. Okay, so hopefully you watched that slide, and you can see like the first thing I did on each one of these was I identified the GCF, and then I divided everything by that GCF. So I got 2x times x plus 8, 39 times x fifth minus 2, x to the fifth times 3x cubed minus 1, and 3xy times x plus 4y. Three term polynomials, they follow the same order. Hopefully you had a chance to look at that. But we're going to go ahead and do the GCFs. I'm going to divide. You guys can just watch if hopefully you've already gotten the answers. Didn't leave myself enough room here. Ty squared, so it's T and Y. Ty squared, that's eight. That was tough, I didn't give myself enough room really once I did the division. Ty squared is my GCF. Four T squared, uh, Y squared, minus Ty plus eight, the Ty squared eliminated. All right, and this last one. Um. Looks like 6. And that's it. So I'm just dividing by 6. This is really easy. 5x to the 7th plus 8x cubed minus 9. 
Sometimes you get lucky like that and you don't have to handle the variables. Uh, hopefully you guys understand that if you don't, go back and watch me do the problems really, like really watch me break down the GCF and how I divide the GCF out. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and do 26 through 45 odds or evens on the back of the worksheet. And once you're done, go ahead and check them off with me. And if you do them to my satisfaction, you'll be ready to move on to day two of the factoring. And it's, tomorrow's a fun day. You get to learn uh, Teach Me How to Factor, which is a video students in Ohio made. So, all right. Thanks, guys.